for what is going to be a significant amount of water that will be uh, coming down towards the town. Those plans are well advanced and we are talking to the disaster district coordinator in that area who is in close communication with the local disaster management group. Moving further up the coast towards Bundaberg, Bundaberg uh, has seen a number of evacuations. Uh, we've uh, seen uh, people utilising evacuation centres, but to the credit of a lot of people, they're actually staying with family and friends in higher places. And we're actually seeing now that roads are starting to open. We uh, do ask for patience from the motoring public. The fact that uh, roads are open but only to one lane is allowing uh, repair works to be uh, undertaken on those uh, major arterial roads and we do urge motorists to allow additional time for their travel and to proceed at a speed based on the road conditions upon which they are driving. That could be a speed substantially lower than the speed limit that is posted for that road and also to be aware of road workers that are working on those roads to restore them uh, to uh, the motoring public. Bundaberg uh, is uh, looking at uh, uh, issues of uh, power as well and water in the uh, Gainda area and Mandabra. And one of the things they've asked us to clarify, there's been a number of reports about a dam wall uh, breaking. That is incorrect. I would like to say to you that the Paradise uh, Dam is intact. They have confirmed that this morning and uh, that is a, a rumour that we wish to put to bed uh, today. Moving uh, up the coast now towards Emerald. Emerald has experienced extremely high waters. Uh, there's been a number of uh, uh, outstanding work conducted in that area by a wide range of people and we applaud their efforts. They're doing a fantastic job. The water is uh, in, uh, in the town, but again it is starting to level out, so we're seeing it go down in some parts of the town and going up in others. We are moving uh, resources up there to assist in the accommodation the QFRS uh, uh, tenting called Habitat, which is uh, self-sufficient for 160 people, is being moved into, uh, into uh, Emerald today, courtesy of the Australian Defence Force. And we're also sending another uh, tenting capacity to support that of another 160. Again, we're in very close communication with the disaster management teams that are working in those areas, and we're working on the resupply and the repowering of a number of communities. It is important to note that in some communities where there is water inundation, power has to be disconnected for safety, and that once the waters have receded, that, uh, that power is then reconnected. Rockhampton is preparing itself for a fairly significant amount of water towards the end of this week. Uh, there is a lot of work in that particular uh, space at the moment and we are redeploying assets across a wide range of government and non-government agencies to support the people of Rockhampton uh, in what will be a fairly protracted uh, flooding situation. Again, a lot of this is a prediction, and uh, we are predicting that Rockhampton could be uh, isolated from the south for uh, a few days. There are plans in place for the resupply of uh, those centres, and also the centres to the north, as you've heard on recent radio reports. And that provides, in essence, a, a synopsis of what is happening around the state at the moment. Sea drops, um, where are they sort of, uh, happening? And you haven't been creative with anything? Well... In, cre in creative, um, I would say to you that what we're doing is we're planning food drops well in advance at the moment. Uh, there are quite a few uh, food drops being uh, organised at a local level and also a district level. Those that can't be managed at th those particular levels are being then coordinated from the State Disaster Coordination Centre. So, for example, little places such as Rolleston and Springshaw, very important towns, and uh, the, those food drops are being organised. Now, whether that be by road or by air, um, that is, uh, we have uh, cells of uh, people that are, are very competent in this and they're organising uh, those foodstuffs. And that includes medical supplies as well. So we have uh, cross-agency, cross-government communication uh, to ensure that the right foodstuffs and medical supplies are delivered. You were saying that uh, assets are going to be deployed to Rockhampton. What kinds of things are, are being sent there? We're sending uh, additional personnel to support the community 
uh, across a, a wide range of things. We've got extra police officers in those particular places. Uh, we're seeing the Department of Communities also uh, moving into those areas. We're seeing the provision or the redeployment of, uh, of uh, Rotary Wing, that's helicopter assets, into the area to support the community and to also make sure that if, uh, for example, if there are medical issues, that they can be dealt with uh, you know, with a, a sense of urgency. Given the scale of, of the flooding now, w what's the morale like for emergency services workers knowing that this is going to be going on through to next week? Surely there must be some, I guess, some tiredness starting to creep in. Oh, look, undoubtedly fatigue and tiredness is, uh, is a consideration for all of us. I would like to say to you that the morale and, and the feeling I'm getting in talking to people around the state is that they're very committed and they're very uh, focused on what they need to achieve. It's important to remember that the flooding that's affecting Queensland is the size of France and Germany combined, and that is a significant land area. And so the, the people in the community, the volunteers, uh, the police, the emergency services personnel, Australian Defence Force are all performing to a very high standard. And I'm sure at the end of this protracted uh, incident that uh, we'll be all very glad to have some rest. But I think at the time where we are now in this particular space, we're all very focused on delivering uh, the best outcome we can possibly deliver for the community. You said you're expecting Rockhampton to be isolated from the south. Where do you think that will take place? Where do you think that the roads are going to be? Well, we, we're anticipating uh, that to occur probably... Uh, uh, by the weekend. I, again, uh, we're talking with nature here, and nature is a, is a fickle beast. There's a lot of water coming down. Uh, there's, uh, there's various river systems that are merging, and as they start to merge, we're seeing different patterns ar arising. We're talking with the Bureau of Meteorology and Hydrology, and what they're providing for us is the best possible picture they can based on predictions. But again, a lot of flooding in Queensland is, is reaching all-time high. Some of them have never been recorded this high in the past. And again, it's really uh, looking at where is, where is this going to be uh, when it peaks. And uh, we've seen cases where we thought it was peaking, and it's kept rising. The evacuation centre at uh, Central Queensland University in Rocky opened this morning. Do you know how many people have moved in there? I don't have exact figures that have moved in there yet. I think they're actually preparing uh, for as the waters come up to, to accept people into those centres. Okay. And any estimations on how many people might go there? Well, I think there's uh, a facility that's catered for uh, well over 1,000 people. Um, and again, it's really a case now of depending on how many people stay with family and friends, uh, people in times of, of, uh, of need are putting their doors open and taking in their friends. And uh, they, w we thank them for that. When you're talking about sorry, medical supplies, are there any particular needs that arise from the floods themselves that mean different kinds of medical supplies have to go to different areas? And are there areas that are more in need of medical supplies than others? That's a very good question. A lot of those questions are being uh, are actually being addressed by Queensland Health. The Queensland Health representatives are, are actually looking at supplies. And again, um, looking at whether or not we're in a recovery or response mode will actually depend on also the types of supplies that we're sending. Uh, we're very focused on the fact that uh, we need to make sure that there's sufficient uh, uh, supplies of uh, insect repellent as well for post, uh, you know, for the post uh, response phase, and uh, Queensland Health is keeping a very close watch on medical supplies, and they're being repositioned uh, in good time. Would you be able to talk a bit about the forced evacuation of Condamine? I understand that there were some residents who really didn't want to go. Did police have to use force at all? In this Not that I'm aware of, no. And uh, I think uh, on on evacuations. Um, if we look at where we live and our, our ties to our, our place of where we live, we have very strong bonds to that. And especially where we've lived in a place for a long period of time and our families have lived there before us. And I totally understand the, uh, the angst that people must feel in, evac in evacuation. What I will say, though, about uh, Condamine, it was a decision made at a local level. They sought support uh, from the district. The district sought support from, uh, from the state. The state provided that support and uh, the fact that Condamine is facing unprecedented flooding levels. There are police in town. They are living in a, an area that is above uh, what is, uh, I think, 15 metres I mentioned. But I think it's important to say that they've, even listening to uh, locals talk on the media, 
they're saying well, we've never experienced this before in that area and there are a significant number of houses in that, in that community that are affected. When communities are affected like that and the power goes off and uh, for protection, you've got to look at the safety of life and preserving of human life, and that's what this is about. The Bay Meteorology is saying that uh, it looks like there could be extensive flooding between Emerald and Rockhampton, and there are lots of smaller communities around there. Are they up for evacuation as well? Are there, are there any towns that uh, you're considering might need to be evacuated in the next couple of days? We're looking at a large number of communities across a wide area, and uh, we're looking at each one based on the hydrology. So each decision is made based on, on the local area. Uh, well, Surratt's a very good example. Um, the planning for Surratt is underway. They've, it's been underway for some time. And uh, it, in that case, it's about looking at um, the heights that are predicted to, to arrive there, and that's based on a lot of predictions. And again, um, there are many small Queensland towns that are affected uh, by flooding. And um, there are just so many. There's over 22 uh, cities and towns in Queensland that have been affected by this uh, by this particular event. Is there any truth in unconfirmed reports that people had to put down animals or people chose to put down animals? I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of any uh, uh, of any such thing occurring. Were they frustrated, the people in Condamine, that they weren't given enough time and that they weren't able to take some of their pets, as the people in Theodore were allowed to do? Um, well, again, I can't answer that, but I do in its entirety. But my understanding is that pets were accompanied with their owners, that the pets were moved as well as part of the evacuation plan. There are a large number of dogs that were left behind. Though. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's something that we would need to talk to the local, uh, the local district about. Are there plans to evacuate Surratt entirely or partly? Um, well, as I say, that planning is still ongoing and uh, probably closer to the time uh, we will have a better idea of that. It's mm -hmm. So it's important to look at that the flooding as the water moves downstream. Uh, it may affect a town tomorrow, a, any town, but in three weeks' time it could affect towns further down the line. So that's one of the things we're looking at is, is that planning in that area. And when is Surat likely to be most at risk? Um, off the top of my head, I think it's uh, next week, but that's just, um, I think, from the briefing today. I think it was next week. But not, not tomorrow? No, not tomorrow, no. Are, are there any communities that you're concerned about for tomorrow? Uh, well, I'm still very concerned about uh, Emerald at the moment and I'm still very concerned about Rockhampton. And uh, I'm also concerned about the small communities in and around those particular large centres. And uh, that's something that we're continually monitoring to look at and uh, where, where we're asked to assist in evacuations, we do. It's important to understand as well that evacuations are instigated at the local level. So there are a lot of evacuations that do occur. There are self-evacuations where people think, no, this is getting too dangerous, I need to leave. There are evacuations where, um, for example, uh, the local uh, disaster management group issue a warning and people say, yep, no, it's time to go. In Rockhampton, are you concerned that people are going to hang on for as long as they can before they realise it's too late to leave? Well, I would probably su suggest to you that uh, the people in, in Rockhampton... Um, have a number of roads around them that are actually cut so it might not be possible to leave because those roads go under and are clear at various times. But I think uh, that's a matter for the local group. They're looking at that. Their warnings are out there and we just ask people to pay attention to the warnings that have been issued by the local disaster management groups. Have there been any incidents of looting? I know yesterday, Brett, you were saying there hadn't been. What's the situation? No, there hasn't been any. Thankfully, there hasn't been any reports of looting. Um, as I discussed uh, yesterday, we have police uh, in all of the communities that are affected, uh, police from state crime operations.